I never imagined my life would take such a dramatic turn. It all started with a game, a seemingly harmless stepson game where you could win or lose. I lost. But what followed was far beyond anything I could have anticipated. You lost, Brad, she said with a hint of finality in her voice. But all is not lost. You will keep your part of the inheritance if you agree to be my son's sissy girlfriend. You will be perfect for a sissy daughter-in-law. I was stunned. The inheritance was a significant sum, a life-changing amount of money. I hesitated, but the reality of my financial situation left me with little choice. Reluctantly, I agreed. My transformation began almost immediately. I was dressed in a bright yellow, frilly dress that seemed more suited for a doll than a boy of 16. My hair was styled in soft curls, and makeup was applied to my face until I barely recognized myself in the mirror. I clutched a bouquet of yellow flowers, my heart pounding in my chest. Standing there in the uncomfortable outfit, I felt a strange mix of emotions. Humiliation, yes, but also a peculiar sense of curiosity. What did this mean for my future? What would people think? Most importantly, what did her son think? Her son, Michael, was a year older than me. He had always been kind, if somewhat reserved. When he saw me for the first time in my new attire, his eyes widened in surprise, but then he smiled gently. Brad, you look, nice, he said, his voice soft. I guess this means we're, dating now. I nodded, feeling my cheeks flush with embarrassment. I guess so. The days that followed were challenging. I had to navigate school, friends, and family, all while maintaining this new persona. Michael was supportive, helping me through the awkward moments and standing up for me when needed. Over time, the initial embarrassment faded, and I began to embrace my new identity. I discovered a side of myself I never knew existed, and I started to enjoy the clothes, the makeup, and even the attention. Michael and I grew closer, our relationship blossoming into something genuine and heartfelt. He was patient and understanding, always there to hold my hand and reassure me. As time went on, my transformation from Brad to my feminine self, Brenda, became more than just a necessity for the inheritance. It evolved into a journey of self-acceptance and genuine change. At first, adopting a feminine name like Brenda felt odd. It was a constant reminder of the game I lost, the agreement I made. But gradually, Brenda became more than a name, it became a part of my identity. I learned to walk gracefully in heels, style my hair in various feminine ways, and apply makeup with confidence. Michael was always by my side, encouraging and supporting me every step of the way. Our relationship deepened as we spent more time together. What started as a forced companionship blossomed into a genuine romance. Michael treated me with such kindness and respect that I couldn't help but fall for him. His acceptance and love for Brenda were unwavering, and it gave me the strength to fully embrace who I was becoming. Transitioning was not without its challenges. There were moments of doubt, fear, and societal pressure. But with Michael's unwavering support, and a newfound confidence in Brenda, I persevered. We faced the world together, hand in hand, and the negativity from others began to fade into the background. As Brenda, I found joy in the little things, dressing up for dates, sharing intimate moments with Michael, and even mundane tasks like cooking and cleaning. I discovered that being feminine was not a limitation but an expansion of who I could be. It allowed me to express parts of myself that had been hidden away for so long. Eventually, Michael proposed to me in the most romantic way. We were in the garden, surrounded by blooming flowers. He got down on one knee and held out a ring that sparkled in the sunlight. Brenda, you've become my world. Will you marry me and be my wife? He asked, his eyes filled with love and hope. Tears welled up in my eyes as I nodded vigorously. Yes, Michael, yes. Our wedding day was a dream come true. I wore a beautiful white gown that made me feel like a princess. My parents, initially skeptical, saw how happy I was and gave me their blessing. Michael's mother, the one who had initially proposed the inheritance condition, watched with pride as her plan had led to something beautiful. As Michael and I exchanged vows, I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude and love. Becoming Brenda had led me to this moment, to the man I loved, and to a future filled with promise and happiness. I realized that my journey, though unexpected, had brought me to a place of true contentment. Being Michael's wife was everything I had hoped for and more. We built a life together, filled with love, laughter, and mutual respect.
I embraced my role as Brenda fully, finding joy in our partnership and the life we were creating. As time went on, the idyllic life I had envisioned with Michael began to change in ways I hadn't anticipated. At first, the changes were subtle, almost unnoticeable. Michael, once so kind and supportive, started exhibiting traits that were controlling and self-centered. It began with small things, comments about my appearance, suggestions on how I should dress or behave. Initially, I thought he was just trying to help me navigate my transition, to make me feel more comfortable and confident as Brenda. But gradually, his suggestions turned into demands. Brenda, you should wear this dress tonight, he'd say, handing me an outfit that was more revealing than I'd ever feel comfortable in. I want you to look perfect for me. While I appreciated his attention to detail, the underlying pressure started to build. His comments about my makeup, hair, and clothes became more frequent and insistent. I began to feel less like a partner and more like a doll he could dress up to his liking. As months passed, Michael's behavior became more overtly narcissistic. He craved admiration and attention, not just from me, but from everyone around him. He reveled in the compliments he received about his beautiful wife and would often parade me at social gatherings as if I were a trophy. Brenda, you're stunning, he'd say in public, his voice dripping with pride. Everyone is so envious of us. But behind closed doors, his demeanor changed. He became more demanding and less considerate of my feelings. He started pushing boundaries, insisting I wear increasingly seductive and provocative outfits. He wanted me to embody a hyper-feminine, almost exaggerated version of a woman, a seductive sissy wife designed to satisfy his fantasies and boost his ego. Brenda, I need you to be perfect for me, he'd say, his eyes narrowing if I hesitated. Do it for us, for our image. I felt trapped. The love and support that had once defined our relationship were overshadowed by his growing need for control and validation. My attempts to discuss my discomfort were met with dismissal or manipulation. Don't you love me, Brenda? Don't you want to make me happy? He'd say, turning my concerns into accusations of disloyalty. Despite the growing unease, I continued to comply, hoping that the man I fell in love with would return. I maintained my appearance meticulously, adhering to his increasingly specific demands. I became adept at dressing seductively, walking with an alluring grace, and projecting the image he wanted. But inside, I felt my sense of self eroding. The turning point came during a particularly lavish party he hosted. Surrounded by guests, he made a grand show of me, boasting about my transformation and how perfect I was as his wife. The looks and whispers from others, the way they ogled and objectified me, made me realize how far I had drifted from the person I once was. As time progressed, Michael's demands and the public persona I was forced to maintain took a heavier toll on my sense of self. The facade of the perfect, doll-like wife became more entrenched in our lives, and my discomfort grew. However, a more painful revelation was yet to come, one that would further challenge everything I thought I knew about our relationship. I discovered Michael's affair almost by accident. He had become sloppy with his phone, his attention caught between maintaining his image and indulging in his new secret. One evening, as I was tidying up after one of our gatherings, his phone buzzed with a message that he had carelessly left on the dining table. The screen lit up with a name I didn't recognize, and the preview of the message read, Can't wait to see you again, my real woman. My heart sank, curiosity overcame me, and I opened the message thread. The texts were filled with intimate exchanges and plans to meet up. They spoke of me too, referring to me as, the sissy doll, and mocking my role in their lives. They joked about how I was more of a servant than a spouse, an object for their amusement rather than a partner. The pain of betrayal was sharp, but it was compounded by the realization of my role in Michael's life, as a mere accessory to his desires and a subject of ridicule in his more authentic relationships. Despite the humiliation and hurt, a twisted part of me began to accept this role, maybe even finding a perverse sense of place in their dynamic. My self-worth had been so eroded by Michael's manipulation and the transformation I had undergone for the inheritance that complying seemed easier than confronting. Michael and his lover, enjoying their dominant roles, soon brought me into their circle more overtly. I was expected to serve at their private gatherings, dressed in the most exaggerated, frilly outfits that symbolized my subservience. They derived pleasure from my humiliation, and strangely, the clear definition of my role provided a twisted form of stability. 
However, serving them did not fill the void of my shattered identity but instead deepened it. Every command followed and every derogatory comment absorbed seemed to solidify my place as less than a partner, merely a plaything in their twisted game. Their dominance was a constant reminder of my vulnerability and helplessness in this arrangement.